I hooked up the signal gener generator to the microphone amplifier and I've got a problem. I'm not getting much out. So let, we're going to have to troubleshoot that. If you look at the circuit, I should be able to come down here. That I've got a 10K and a 4.7K. And up here on transmit, there's about 12 volts there. So we can just approximate this. I've got approximately 14, 15K. And if I had 12K in this string, I is equal to E over R, which would be 12 divided by 12K, give me about a milliamp of current flow through there, which I should drop somewhere around a 4 volts through this resistor right here. So I should have about 4 volts. And if I've got full, about 4 volts here, I'm going to have 6 tenths or so less than that on the emitter. First check we'll make is the base voltage. It's right at the end of a 4.7K, so we'll just go ahead and look under there and see what we can find. There's the 4.7K right there. So I'll go ahead and touch the end and see what's there. 3.64 volts. We have base voltage. Let's look at the emitter voltage. The emitter it has a 2.2K across it, so we'll just look at jumps to the transistor. The emitter is the tab. And we'll see what voltage is there. Tabs down here. Here's a 2.2K, and we measure 3.03 volts. Well, we should be six tenths away from the base, which was 3.64. Base was 3.64, so we have the transistor forward biased. If we look on the collector, we should have less than 12 volts, and we have 8.36. So DC-wise, I think we're okay. This all looks like it works, DC-wise. This is what we're seeing on the scope. The top leads the input. The bottom lead, what you're seeing is 10 megahertz, because this is right next to the crystal oscillator. So we've got 10 meg running, but we don't see much modulation voltage on it. There's a little, there's maybe 5 millivolts or so variation. So that's on the collector of the transistor. So let's take a look at the emitter. The emitter is bypassed by a 50 microfarad capacitor. So AC wise, this ought to be AC ground. So we shouldn't see any signal at all. It should just be a DC voltage there. And if we have that, then we'd have a 2.2K in the collector and we just have the base emitter junction resistance at the AC resistance of that junction on the bottom half of a gain formula it'd be 2.2k over somewhere oh around 25-30 ohms so we should have a gain of 100 or better out of that. The scope showed about 20 millivolts of AC on the emitter that's not good and you notice it's in the emitter voltage is in step with the base voltage, they're in phase. That's the base voltage up at the top of the input voltage. So I shouldn't have anything on the emitter, so what we need to do is look at that 50 microfarad capacitor and see if maybe there's a problem there. The component location print shows the emitter coming down with a track underneath the 2.2K resistor, turning up here, going to the 50 microfarad and the other side of the 50 microfarad goes to ground. That will put that emitter at AC ground. So let's take a close look at the board and see if that's really what's happening. Okay, here's the emitter the resistor. The track goes down here underneath this 2.2K, goes up, and this doesn't look good here. I see an open hole there. There's a 50 microfarad capacitor, but there's a track that that capacitor is supposed to have one lead in, so this capacitor is evidently installed wrong. So let's pull it off and take a look at it. Here's the board with the capacitor removed. Here's the 2.2K resistor, the track comes down. The track comes down, here's the hole that was not plugged, that was open. The capacitor was plugged into this hole, which goes to ground, and to this track which goes to the plus 12 volts coming in to feed the oscillator. So it was, the capacitor was across these two donut pads where they should have been across this one. 
That just goes to show you that even us old crusty so-called experts like I'm supposed to be make a mistake every now and then and plug a part in the wrong hole. But the key to the story on that that told us that we had a problem in this section, the emitter wasn't at AC ground and it was supposed to be. So let's go put this capacitor back in the right way and we'll test with the signal again. I've replaced the capacitor. The capacitor was probably plugged in re reverse polarized last time. So I replaced it. I only had a 16 volt electrolytic rating and normally for working with 12 volts I'd want more. But remember we just measured the emitter voltage. It was only about 4 volts. So I only have 4 volts across it anyway. So now let's take a look and see what the emitter looks like with the scope now. Okay, now most of the AC is gone off that. Remember we had about 20-25 millivolts or before. So the emitter is staying pretty good so let's take a look at the collector. Boy that's considerably different than before. We'll change the gain and now it looks like we have with about 20 millivolts in we're getting about 400 millivolts out. So that looks a lot better. Let's turn the amplitude down on the generator. Everything seems to be working fine. If I turn the amplitude up, I should be able to go up to a pretty good sized signal before I start distorting. So that looks like this section is working, at least the mic amp is now anyway. We may not have been totally successful today, but we did find one problem and fixed it. So that's what you have to look at is one step at a time. We made a step. We've tested out the mic section. It now works correctly. So the next thing we need to do is fix this problem in the modulator.